Recent scientific studies suggested that cloned animals were much more likely to suffer from a variety of genetic abnormalities and medical problems. But a new study in this month's issue of the journal Science offers a differing opinion. Dr. Robert Lanza authored that report. He's in Watertown, Massachusetts. Good morning, Dr. Lanza. Good morning. I know you've done extended research on the whole concept of cloning. So why are the results of this study so important and so significant? Well, we've all been hearing about these horrific scenarios in the popular and scientific media about uh, gross abnormalities. And what we have found at Advanced Cell Technology, we have one of the largest groups of cloned animals in the world, and we found that the vast majority of our animals are perfectly healthy and normal. We followed a group of 30 cloned cattle from birth all the way through into adulthood, and we found that, uh, the, again, 80% of those animals survived into to adulthood. By comparison, normal cattle survive at a, a rate of approximately, uh, I think it's about 84 to 87 percent. So there's really not much difference. We uh, ran virtually every kind of medical test uh, available. We ran general health screens, physical examinations, blood and urine analysis, uh, biochemistries, and again, all the tests came entirely within normal limits. So we didn't observe any of the gross abnormalities, the immune deficiencies, and, and other problems that have been reported. I understand that two of the cloned cows actually have already given birth. How is the health of the calves? Uh, very nice. Uh, Victoria, who's about four years old, had a calf, Vicky, about three months, and she is doing very well. She was born without any assistance and is, is suckling and nurturing very nicely. But some scientists still say, Dr. Lanza, that you started with 500 embryos and you only ended up with 24 adult cows and that 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 those numbers just simply aren't good enough well certainly there is a high attrition in, during pregnancy we had a, a 73 percent attrition versus about 7 to 24 percent normally for IVF uh, derived embryos but of the animals that went to term approximately 30 of those the survival rate again was 80 percent which is it was quite comparable to normal again you know certainly we we don't think that it would be advisable considering the unpredictability of the procedure to use this for human reproductive purposes you know we're against that for for ethical and moral reasons as well but I would like to say that we think that this technology certainly uh, has tremendous potential for tens of millions of Americans suffering from a long list of diseases right uh, the fact that these animals are alive and healthy out in the field you have to remember that they consist of over 250 different cell types interacting in an exquisitely sensitive way. So certainly we have every confidence to believe that we will be able to use this technology, for instance, to produce new insulin producing cells for patients with diabetes, right. etc. And, and obviously human cloning and the whole embryonic stem cell research concept is a hot topic on Capitol Hill uh, right now. Where do things stand there right now? Well, the House passed a bill that would outlaw not only human reproductive uh, cloning but also the medical applications, which I think would be very sad indeed if, if the uh, Senate were to follow suit in the coming weeks. Uh, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. The, em the potential of embryonic stem cells is enormous. And I think people just simply haven't thought of the next step. What are we going to do with all of these useful cells once we generate them? Mm -hmm. Say in a, couple in a couple years we have these insulin producing cells. The only way we know how to get those into a patient in any clinically useful way is this technology. Through cloning we can generate the same cells so that, uh, of, as the individual so that we can just simply inject them in and alleviate all of these uh, horrific diseases. And we only have a couple seconds here but you talked about that this could lead to cures for diseases like Alzheimer's and diabetes. What else? Uh, uh, for instance, we've used some of these stem cells, for instance, to, to treat an animal that had spinal bifida. All right, well, he apparently lost, lost Dr. Robert Lanza there. Uh, we thank him for joining us this morning.